Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us here on the Rochester Press Box. I'm Bill Pucko, joined by my friends here, Tariq Spence. How are you doing this week? I'm wearing the blue because I'm praying for a New York Football Giants win. It's a good color on you too, by the way. Yeah, I hope it wins. <laughs> you also wearing blue, Pat Duffy? How about these Blue Jays making a run like somebody handsome with a beard and very <laughs> intelligent predicted after the Yankees were going to collapse and everyone laughed at me, but hey, who's upset about that? Catch your stuff on Twitter after the well, show. Bill is a smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just hates the Yankees. I'm a legitimate... I also don't have a beard. <laughs> this is true. This is true. <laughs> Uh, so let's talk about the last week of the baseball season coming up. How do you see this whole thing shaking out? I, I see it's just for the Yankees to lose if they can get there. Listen, the American League East is the best race right now because there's so many teams still available with the last few weekends. For the Yankees, their schedule is really tough. Obviously, you get rid of Boston, and that's done. Then you go to Toronto, then you basically wrap things up with Tampa Bay, which is always fun at the end of the year, depending on where Tampa Bay is going to be. So you've got all these other teams now in the American League to sort of wrap up in the wild card. I don't know. They're on the outside look looking in with a lot of games to play and a couple different question marks. Yeah, and Toronto's a team that they'll play in the beginning of the week. going to be a, a well-watched series, don't you think? 100%, because look, look, this series with Toronto, in all sincerity, it doesn't just mean this season. It could mean the next couple of years. Think about this, right? Because we sat here, what was it, a month ago when the Yankees were on that surge right after the trade deadline. And, and I told... You said... What did I say? They said they won't last. No. It can't last. Unsustainable. It's an unsustainable thing. And the crap I caught from Yankees fans on social media when I... Hey, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Whole entire towns of Gates and Greece screaming at me very, via social media. Look... The money that you spent prior to this season, the expectations you had, the capital that you spent at the trade deadline, right? The players you already have on this roster. And there is a legitimate chance that the New York Yankees could finish fourth in the AL East. Like, that's not out of the question. If you miss the wild card, you're going to be fourth in the AL East. Heads are going to roll, right? Like, how does Aaron Boone survive? I don't know how Aaron Boone survives this, even if you make the wild card. Like, if you don't make a deep run, Cashman, Boone, explain yourselves. We gave you the talent. What are you doing with this? What a division. I mean, four of the top six teams in the American League are in the AL East. So they're playing each other 19 times. Yep. And, in fact, the, the maybe the single most... Determining factor was how these four teams did against the Baltimore Orioles. Yes. Which is interesting because you got Toronto basically taking on, what is it, Minnesota, the Yankees, and Baltimore, <laughs> which is basically a, a triple A team in, at this particular point in the season. So they've got sort of the easy schedule to make sure that they're going to get in the wild card going forward. But Seattle's still in this as of right now, mm -hmm. and Oakland. So this is going to be really fun to see. You know, it's kind of like an aggressive game of musical chairs. We've got four or five teams, and you only got one chair left in this bad boy. So it'll be fun. In a national league, it's not as fun. It's kind of like, you know, let's get to the end of the race here with St. Louis uh, going on this great streak at the end of the year, but they're still warding off a lot of teams like Philadelphia and Cincinnati. So it's it's just not as fun as the American League, but National League's going to be interesting. But it's fascinating at the same time because you get the Cardinals sitting, they're going to be a wild card team with 10 wins in a row as we speak. With the winner of the Giants-Dodgers, two best records in baseball, one game separating them. I personally believe if the Dodgers win that division, they're unstoppable. You've got to drop them into that wild card and give someone a chance to beat them. Yeah, but hold on. How many times over the last couple of years have we said the Dodgers are and finished that with They're unstoppable? Even better now. Oh, but okay, but I mean, just show me it can get, be done. Like, do it. Yeah. Show me it's done. And here's one more thing, just to uh, pile on the Yankees a little more because I'm really enjoying my victory lap right now. Take as long as you want. Okay, this was <laughs> the last two years was your opportunity to own that division to make the run you were going to make. Toronto now has legitimate, young, affordable players. Mm -hmm. They are going to overtake you. You have contracts right now that are albatrosses. What did you guys say in, uh, before we started? Garrett Cole's contract is what right now? $324 million. How many years does he have left? Eight more years. Okay. <laughs> Look at the affordable talent and budding superstars in Toronto. Boston always formidable. The Rays are always there. What do you do if you are the Yankees right now? Yeah, their, pro their, their solution is usually just to throw a bag, bag of money at it. But you can't do that forever. Oh, by the way, the uh, Los Angeles Dodgers losing one of their best pitchers of the year and for the Braves, the, one of their best outfielders for the year, still made the playoffs. That's made their last game of the season. It's been a great baseball season. It's kind of good to have it back with fans in the stands, too. This is the Rochester Press Box. We're talking Buffalo Bills next. Original Bay Goodman Pizza, located on the corner of North Winton at Browncroft. There are three ways to get the original Bay and Goodman delivery. Go to baygoodman.com.
Welcome back to the Rochester Press Box, a segment of the Press Box, our Buffalo Bill segment, brought to you by Ralph Honda for three generations and for 50 years, New York's first and oldest Honda dealer. Visit Ralph Honda today and find out how we do Honda right. That's Ralph Honda, ralphhonda.com. Buffalo Bills. Look, you know, no one likes to hear about anybody else's fantasy team, but Josh Allen is my guy and he's killing me. Maybe that's why he's not playing well, because you touched him and now he's <laughs> cursed. I, I don't I don't know. I don't know what's happening right now. Like, last week, and I said this on Twitter, and half of people agreed with me and half of people called me stupid. That was the least satisfying 35 nothing division win in NFL history. And here's why. Exactly what you said. Like, Josh Allen owns the Miami Dolphins. He's got three AFC Player of the Week awards in his young career just against Miami. Wow. This was his game to come out and be like, I'm back. And he couldn't do it. Now, granted, you're playing against the most expensive corner duo in the league in Miami. They're really good corners, and they're dropping people back. But you went 35 nothing, but you didn't do it in any way that Bills fans were expecting you and need you to do it to beat the high-octane offenses in Baltimore and Tennessee and Kansas City and looks like Vegas now, too. Well, if that's a game that he's not going to perform well, that's the best game to do so because what did they do, Duffy? Come on, give me the credit. How did they score their first touchdown? On a 52-yard lucky breakout run? No lucky breakout run. The guy made a big run. A good offensive run sure. was able to do the job. I think Allen, I was really concerned about a lot of passes that he threw in the game, but Thank goodness the defense stepped up, put a donut on the board, and was able to knock out the starting quarterback, too, is done for a while now. Don't you dare sit here, because last week you said the Bills had to learn to run the ball. And I said they win by double digits, and you were, oh, oh. First of all, it's a terrible impression of me. Second of all, oh. there is no... Do I really look like that? Oh. <laughs> I closed my eyes? Yes. Okay. Anyway, no. Look, if you look at the rushing yardage, it's impressive when you don't break it down. Look, Singletary had a 52-yard run and ended up with 80-something yards, 30 more yards. Uh, Zach Moss had two touchdowns in his first game dress, but he only rushed for 20-something yards in the game. Look, you hit a couple of home runs. You had some great runs in there, but that's not sustainable rushing numbers. There was a point in the third quarter, despite the fact that they were down 28 nothing. that the Dolphins had more offensive yardage and more first downs than the Bills did. It was the weirdest game I had ever seen. I walked away feeling very unsettled, but it's a 35 nothing win, so I don't know what else to say. Tariq, uh, nine and a half. I was surprised when the line came up that it was that big. Wa Washington is at Buffalo this week, and Buffalo's a nine and a half point favorite. And, and once again, I think Buffalo will do extremely well. I won't give a complete number yet so that Duffy doesn't explode, but I do believe it's at Washington. Now with an extra sort of week with their backup quarterback, you get a little tape on the guy, you got to Understand that Washington isn't great. They should have lost to the Giants, leave that alone, last week. But now they're going up against a Buffalo team that might have their mojo back a little bit. And I'm a little bit worried about Allen. Do you think the audience, the fact that there's a huge crowd there, plays a factor? I in said this? that two weeks ago, and you guys thought I was stupid. Here's my. my I never thought you were stupid. Yeah. You already you made the face. It's too I late did. to go back. You did the closed eyes face. Look. You did the closed eyes face. I did do that. <laughs> my irrational fear is that. My football analyst head says you may have played the best defense in the league week one, and you might have played the best corners in the league week two, and all of a sudden everything's going to be fine week three. Here's the problem, though, my concern. This Washington team, you're right. They're not a great team. If they have one strength... It's their defensive line, mm -hmm. right? Like, that's what they do. And your biggest weakness offensively right now, if you don't want to count the struggles Allen's having is your offensive line. You saw what the Steelers were able to do to the Bills week one. If the kid ain't got time to throw, I, I don't know. I, I think Washington's defensively as good as Pittsburgh. I don't I don't, I don't think so. If Daniel Jones can score 29 points and he hasn't been able to score all season long, I think the Bills will score that much, if not more. Over or above? Uh, oh, above. Nine and a half? Oh, yeah. Nine and a half? No. No, what? you never take nine and a half. You know this. You're a degenerate yeah, gambler as well. <laughs> never take nine and a half. They're, they're, they're going to give nine and a half. They're, yeah, I'm sorry. They're going to win. No nine and a half. What I was right last week. I was also right. I took them over three and a half. Well, you can ride. You can only ride that through the end of this week. And uh, <laughs> one of us. Next week. There's one guy at this desk that's two and zero oh on picks so far this season. So if you would acquiesce to me, well, he really feels it. good about these Yankee calls, boy. I tell you, he's riding this <laughs> all the way. He's feeling it this week. Pretty good about himself. So we've got uh, we got a Washington bet. And two on the Bills side. I think they, I, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a Washington too. Mm -hmm. I think four to six points is about this one, right? So we'll see. I think Washington is better than people give him credit for. This is the Rochester Press Box. The Buffalo Bills segment brought to you by Ralph Honda. Like it or not, is next. Here's the Press Box trivia question brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road at 390.
All of these things show Josh Allen has a strive for greatness inside of him. Falcon Around with Carl Falk. New episodes every Tuesday on Rock Sports Now. Here's a Press Box Trivia answer brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road at 390. Are you facing criminal charges from a DWI and feel that you never imagined it could happen to you? Contact attorneys with years of experience as prosecutors and defenders. Contact Kanguli Brothers Law today for a free consultation. You can put your trust in us. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us here in the Rochester Press Box. This segment, like it or not, brought to you by Kanguli Brothers Law. Attorneys with years of experience defending the accused don't go unprepared. Contact Ganguly Law today. Tariq, like it or not, Notre Dame banned the Purdue drum this week. Well, uh, terrible. Uh, first of all, they, uh, they haven't had that situation happen with their, I think, their drum since 1979. If they had it like over 100 years, they wouldn't let it in the stadium, which there was a way to get it in the stadium if they just used the Notre Dame entrance, but Notre Dame wouldn't let them do it. And so I, I guess they don't get the drum on the field, which they could have done before the game and during halftime to get it out. Look, when you build it as the world's build biggest drum, there are some places you're not going to be able to get it in, right? Like, don't big it as, build it as the world's biggest. And be like, what do you mean it's too big to get places? Right? <laughs> Is this what makes college football great? Petty little rivalry things that show up like this? I mean, I know that there's a negative connotation in Notre Dame and blah, 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 whatever. I love it. I love it. Well, was, somebody sit back and say, you know, this really doesn't make us look good. Let them bring in the dumb. It's Purdue. Well, but Purdue <laughs> at one point was a pretty big rival with Notre Dame. I'm just saying. Right. Just saying. World's well, biggest drum. Pat, like it or not, uh, WNBA playoffs this week. Uh, I do find the format interesting because Tariq and I were just talking about this. It's one in. One in. One, one single elimination, one single elimination, <laughs> then best of five semifinals, and of course finals. Yeah, I mean, look, I think things would be a lot more interesting if you did it this way in other professional sports as well. But, I mean, the talent in WNBA, and you could attest to this. It is, so dismisses the regular season, though. Best of one, like. There's no payoff. But that's about to happen in Major League Baseball as well. But But it's a wild card kind of thing. But I mean, it's how is it any different, right? Like you have the Yankees spending how many hundreds of millions of dollars to potentially get one game against somebody or everyone's going to get fired. Look, I mean, it ups the pressure. And I do understand your idea, the the statement that it invalidates a regular season. But I mean, if your team is good enough and if you're seasoned enough, you're going to win that one game. Plus eight teams make the playoffs. There's 12 in the league. And it sort of resembles a little bit of college basketball. I mean, one and done. You, we kind of love it when it's March Madness. You know, we kind of talk a little bit about the, the WNBA because it wasn't that long ago that nobody paid any attention to it. And honest God, the, the, the biggest experts nationally are, are talking WNBA like they really know what they're saying, and they're really watching and paying attention to these games now, which I don't think five years ago they were. Well, I'll tell you what it is. It could be representation because, look, I was in middle school, I think, when the WNBA started. Women my age were in middle school when the WNBA started. I mean, look, you can... When I was a kid, when girls played soccer, that was their ticket out to go get scholarships and things like that. But when little girls turn on the television, and I can attest with this to this with my daughter and women's college hockey right now, especially the RIT program, she's a hockey player... It encourages more girls to go out and play basketball. Do you make a point to watch women's basketball because your daughter is watching you watch it? No, I just like sports in general. And look, I'll be honest with you. It's not like I have appointment listening for WNBA basketball. If it's on and I'm, there's nothing else going on with me, I know that sounds terrible, I'll pop it on. I will go out of my way to watch women's hockey with my daughter, even though I would watch it individually. But I'll, I'll skip over games I would want to watch if there's women's college hockey on. Just because, yeah, I want her to see, like... There is a route for you to go do this if you'd like to. And even if there's not, it's not professional hockey, these women are doing what they want to do. I, I mean, Tariq, you have daughters. You I, lo- I, I love it. And I love the fact that NBA players go to the games, sit at the games, are there supporting teams, people that they know, running camps with some of these players. So it's, it's been more of a collusion thing with players for WNBA and NBA working together. Seems to be a legitimate change. Like or not, brought to you by Ganguly Brothers Law. Unfinished Business is next. The Press Box Stat of the Week is being brought to you by McArdle's Restaurant in Fairport. McArdle's is open seven days a week with dining available indoors and out, takeout and delivery. Come home to McArdle's.
Welcome back and thanks for joining us here on the Rochester Press Box. It's time for Unfinished Business. Unfinished Business brought to you by Greg the Roofer. Better roof, better price. Better call Greg the Roofer. Save time and money on your roof, siding and windows. Call today for a free estimate and financing is available. It's gregtheroofer.com. Unfinished Business. Pat, start us off. Former Buffalo Bills general manager Doug Whaley did a podcast appearance in the offseason, and he said that Brandon being the current general manager of the Bills gets a lot of passes for missing on draft picks because Josh Allen has been so successful. And in that talk, he cited Ed Oliver and AJ Epinesa as guys who haven't lived up to expectations. Well, all of a sudden, Doug Whaley's wrong. Don't get me wrong. I like Doug Whaley for his own things. If you look at the last two weeks, first of all, Greg Rousseau, rookie first round pick, 30th overall, is tied for the the NFL leading sacks with two. He's tied for second in pressures to the quarterback with seven. A.J. Epinesa against the Miami Dolphins was a man possessed. Eight. Eight pressures of a quarterback, and I believe it was 32 snaps. I don't even know how many run plays that was. It was insane. Epinesa also responsible, if I'm not mistaken, for knocking Tua Tunga Iloa out of that game on Sunday. But I think the most impressive and the Feather in the cap of Brandon Bean, if he cares about what Doug Whaley has to say, is the fact that Ed Oliver has been playing out of his mind. When it comes to defensive linemen that had a game, especially against Pittsburgh, Ed Oliver's all over the place. He's in the backfield, and that's with Star Latulale, the starting defensive tackle that takes up two and three guys being in there already. Look, you can be afraid of what's going on with Josh Allen. You can wonder why these receivers routes aren't working. You can be a little bit worried that... 50% to 70% of the running backs rushing yards are coming on one play. But Brandon Bean, what he did right was put together that defensive line. And I'm here for it. (laughs) Don't do the math on this, but in 1986, I was nine years old watching my New York Mets play. And I thought to myself, these are the greatest guys I've ever seen play the game of baseball. It's the reason why baseball is my first uh, sport that I've ever loved. Then you start to realize as you get a little bit older and the team starts to fall apart that sometimes these great moments of them winning the World Series are just one of those moments that will just last in your lifetime. Then you watch a documentary on Once Upon a Time in Queens and then you wonder how in the heck they could have ever won a World Series championship and could have won more. Listen, the one thing I can understand is I don't judge. I'm trying to understand Things that were big for me at nine may not have been the same way, obviously, at the age of, well, you do the math. Mm -hmm. But at any rate, you understand I love this team now, after the documentary, more than I did when I was nine years old. It took me back to that age where everything was innocent and baseball was great, Strawberry, Gooden, Hernandez, everything was amazing, and that time will be frozen forever. To know exactly what these guys went through off the field makes the story even more amazing. Honestly, now, before this week, did you know that Purdue claimed the world's biggest bass drum? Marching bands were and are still a big deal in the Midwest, so the drum became Purdue's thing. The drum was commissioned back in 1921. It was originally seven feet, three inches in diameter. It's pretty big, three feet, nine inches wide. It was manned by a crew who undergo a rigid training regimen. To be on the drum crew is considered a high honor at Purdue. Purdue's drum was challenged by Big Bertha at the University of Texas in 1961 to see which was actually larger. Bertha failed to show for the official measurement. So ever since, the Purdue has held fast to the claim that its drum is the biggest, although the exact measurements are now a closely held secret. It was actually stolen once. Kudos to the University of Indiana for that. Well, college football is full of such things. Handsome Dan was the first live mascot. The Bulldogs, 16 generations, have represented Yale since 1899. The Ramblin' Wreck at Georgia Tech, that's real. It's a fully reconditioned 1930 Ford Model A sports coupe that leads the team onto the field. At Hawaii, the haka is the dance of choice. It is learned and performed by the football players and done before each home game. At Iowa, the visitor's locker room is annually painted pink. There's Howard's Rock at Clemson, Ralphie's Run at Colorado. The sousaphone player has been dotting the eye for the Ohio State Band since 1937. And there's a jackass somewhere at Notre Dame last week made the decision to keep the Purdue drum out. Unfinished Business brought to you by Greg the Roofer. Thank you, guys. Tariq, nice job. Looking forward to this upcoming Sunday's games. I can't wait for kickoff. And the end of the baseball season. It's going to be a great week. Uh-oh. Well, I'm, I'm, getting, getting, I'm, getting over. I'm just thinking, if the Bulldog from Yale was Handsome Dan, how ugly were the guys in New England in 1899? <laughs> well, a bull, for, that's on a Bulldog looking at a Bulldog. Okay. You're, where are you from? Uh, Yale. <laughs> 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 that's our program. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us on the Rochester Press Box.